as well. So I make it 20 seconds past 11. So we don't need the chair at the moment. So we'll just put that out the way. So we're going to start. We're going to start as we normally do with just a very nice, gentle warm up. Your feet, I'm going to go back here so as you can see my feet with my nice pink laces. Your feet hardly leave the ground. If you can, do it just gently on your toes. Get your arms moving as well because um, some people do it like this. <laughs> but you need to move your arms because you want to get that swing in the shoulder. And what you're doing by doing this is you're mobilizing the joints and you're getting the muscles warm to say, right, there's exercise coming. OK, so, well, I, I just launched in, didn't I? I should say welcome to the exercise class for the 1st of April 2020. Unusual times. Maybe the lockdown is an elaborate April Fool, but I don't think so. So my classes tend to, uh, well, not tend to, they're, they're to do, you can stop walking for a minute. It's functional fitness, which is fitness for everyday activities, okay? And I concentrate on strength, flexibility, coordination, and balance. Okay, there's not so much CV in it, although there'll be some bits that'll make you puff a bit, but you need your outside exercise and you're walking for that bit. Um, there's probably, I don't know if you've heard stuff about Muscle wastage, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it's scary. But the good news is that um, if you start doing exercises, it's very, it's surprising how quickly the body starts to adapt and recover. And this, I just like to say, this is a marathon, not a sprint. So it's not going to be all high energy, high intensity, and then leaving you exhausted for the rest of the day and thinking, oh, I'm never doing that again. Hopefully these are exercises that can be sustained. Okay. So I'm also going to try and make it relevant to all levels of fitness, which is totally impossible. So if you're a gym bunny and you're really, really high energy, it's probably not for you. But otherwise, you can use weights on all the exercises that I'm doing. On the other hand, if you're not as fit, you could do most of the exercises sitting down. So enough talk. I hate videos where people talk and talk and talk at the beginning. So walking. And now we're going to put hands on shoulders. I'll go back a bit and just stretch up to the ceiling. Try and get a good separation between um, rib cage and hip bone. Back down, out to the side, in, forward. We'll do two more, twice more, the whole up, out, forward, and then one more time, up, side, forward. Right, we're going to do walking again, but we're marching on the spot, but we're going to bring the knees up a little bit higher and definitely go on your toes this time if you can. And your arms, don't let your arms just swing naturally. Actually make them work because that way you will get the shoulders mobilised. Just caught sight of myself in the mirror. It looks a bit odd, but we're going to do this. And then in a minute, we're going to do it for another five seconds here. So four, three, two, three. One, then put your hand on your shoulder to make a wing. And imagine you've got a pencil sticking out at the side. And you're going to draw, just have a look at your arm to check that it's sticking out to the side. And we're going to draw an imaginary circle with our imaginary pencil on our imaginary wall, backwards for five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then forward. One, two, three, four, five. I like to do that as a wing because your shoulder muscle is very, it moves a lot. And if you're swinging your arm, it's really easy to sort of throw it out, particularly as you get older, if you haven't done much exercise. So we're doing the other one out there. Imaginary pencil back. One, two, three, four, five. And then forward. One two, three, four, five. How was that? Jolly good. Right, I'm going to stand back here again so as you can see my feet. We're going to just do heel digs like that, just digging your heel in. You don't need to go very far forward. Just keep doing that. Okay, now keep doing it. Don't stop because I've stopped. As you're doing that, I want you to anchor your elbows into your body and opposite arms go up in a bicep curl. So your right leg is doing a heel dig, your left arm is doing a bicep curl. Now this has, makes you think, 
you've got to sort of keep your wits about you. You can't think, what am I doing for tea? Just check that you're doing opposite arm and leg. Because on Saturday, when I, uh, Monday when I was doing it, I suddenly looked down and I was doing same arm and leg. So it's very easy if you lose concentration, as I nearly did then. Right, five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. Fantastic. Now, opposed to that, or opposite of that, we're going to do toe tap. So just tap your toe. This is a bit more difficult, I find. Just tap your toe. That's it. Just tapping your toe. You don't need to do big steps. It can just be just in front of you. But it's getting your ankles going that way for that way for um, heel dig and that way for toe, toe tap. So now keep doing the toe taps and we're going to do exactly the same thing again. OK, so oops, I'm doing heel digs. You can't see my feet, so you don't know. So toe tap with your right foot, bicep curl with your left arm. And this is just getting you used, your brain used to thinking about all the different ways that your limbs are moving. Don't worry if this is the first time you've done it and you can't manage it and you find yourself getting in a right old knot. It doesn't matter at all. For a start, nobody can see you. You're the only one that knows about it unless you're exercising with someone else. And also, it's amazing how quickly you'll get used to doing it. All right, we'll do five more. Ooh, see, same arm leg. Five more. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, I'm just going to move this chair out of the way because it. Next one we're going to do is just out to the side with your toe. I'll go back so as you can see it, just like that. You don't need to go very far. This is a good one because, well, they're all good. But this one, as you're going out, I'm going to, I'm going to sachet in a bit. As you're going out, with one leg, this leg is having to bend and bear your weight. So although it doesn't feel as if you're particularly doing exercise on it, you are. Right, at the same time, don't stop doing that. Prayer hands, and as your leg goes out, your arm goes out. Okay. I'll not do this one for too long. Five, four, Three, two, one. Last one in this sequence. You're just going to step back. Okay. If you're in the, if you're sitting in the chair, if you're having to do this on the chair, this is one that I haven't quite figured out a way of how to do it in the chair yet. Just a little step back. If you need to hold on, by all means, there's no shame in holding on. What we want to avoid is falling over. The reason I'm saying about holding on with this one is because when you're stepping back, it's a slightly less, don't stop, it's a slightly less natural movement. Now, as you're stepping back, have your hands in here like little dinosaur hands. And as your leg goes back, your arms come forward. So jazz hands, open your fingers, give your hands a bit of a workout as well. So sometimes people find this quite difficult to coordinate because you're having to think, put your leg back, arms out, fingers moving, fingers splayed, but it will come, honestly. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. If a thing is difficult, it means you should do it more, not less. So if you find it difficult going up and down stairs, don't take the lift. Walk halfway up or as far up as you can. Um, I suppose you can't you can't take the lift halfway up, can you? But try and do one flight and then get the lift if you like. But if something is difficult, it means that you need to practice it more, not less. Right. That's the lecture over for today. Right. Just keep those in mind because we're going to need them later. Um, so what does it say on my little thing? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to unleash our inner teenager now. We're just going to do some shoulder shrugs up like that and then down. Up. Try not to squid your neck down. Two, three. Feel your shoulder blades sliding up and down. Four, five. We'll do one more. Six. And now we're going to roll our shoulders back and roll them forward, 
back for five, forward for five. Again, try to avoid doing that. It's just your shoulders that move. So one, two, I find this quite difficult. Three, four, five. If any exercise, one hurts, two, don't do it. Three, four, five. Quite a lot of people I've noticed in older age have something wrong with their shoulders, frozen shoulders, or they've dislocated it, or a rotator cuff has gone. If any of these exercises hurt, don't do it. You know the difference between pain or not pain, but a muscle discomfort because you haven't used it for a long time and pain. If it's painful, don't do it. Just wait and then do the next exercise when you can do it. OK, right. Just to finish the warm up, what we're going to do is we're going to do that routine that we were doing before all this stuff, but we're going to put them all together. OK, so we're going to start off with heel digs like that. And we're going to do, sorry, I'm doing this totally wrong, back where you were. Right, so we're going to do heel digs, and then we're going to go into the side one, and then we're going to go back, and then we're going to do toe tap, and then we're going to do heel dig, and then we're going to do side, and then back, and toe tap, and then heel dig, and side, back, and toe tap. I'm going to do it one more time. So heel dig, side, back, and then toe tap. Right, are we all feeling nice and warmed up? Remember that little routine. Right, get your chair. We're going to do squats. Now squats, are you, you've probably heard about squats, seen them, people doing them on the telly. They're really important because if you have strong thighs and strong glutes, your bum muscles, um, you can do most things. You can get up and down stairs, you can get in and out of the bath, you can get in and out of the chair. If you're not very strong yet, if your thighs aren't very strong, start off in the chair and just, if you need to put your hands on your knees to get up, fair enough. But if you can do it just by swinging, that's good as well. Those of you who know how to do this could be doing very gentle squats, not not big ones, just, just little ones like that, just getting ready for what we're going to do. If you can't get up without your hands, do your hands, but then sit back down. So you're just using the, using the same muscles, but you're sitting down, you're not standing up. Those of you who are doing the squats, remember, feet slightly wider than hip width apart. Don't let your knees go over your toes. This is the only exercise I need to talk quite as much because it's a technique thing. So you're going down like that. Squatting is sitting without the chair. So your, your bottom sticks out and you go down. You don't have to go down very far. Stick your bottom out. Go down to there if you want. That's perfectly okay. If that's all you can do at the moment, your legs will get stronger. Don't, don't, be ten don't go forward on your knees. It's backwards. Okay? We're going to do 10. I'm going to do five in the chair and then five proper squats. Right, so one, when you stand up, push your pelvis forward. Two, to keep the hip flexors, straighten them about, uh, them about a bit. Four, five. I'm turning sideways, so as you can see, my back is straight. Six, seven, eight. I always have my hands out here to balance myself. Nine, because you're back on your heels. Ten, there's a, a, a chance of overturn, of overbalancing. I quite, fall, quite often fall backwards when I'm doing that. Right, next one is arms. I'm standing sideways again, so as you can see, all it is, stand with your hands on your thighs. You're going to raise one arm above your head, hip feet width apart, and as that arm comes down, the other one goes up. So that's, we're going to do 10. Note how the other arm comes back as far as it can. Okay, so one, two, we're going to do 10. Three. Four, 
five. This is great for your back and your shoulders. Six, and your shoulder mobility. Seven, eight. If you can't, do the full range of movement. Nine, do what you can do. Uh, I think that might be 11 we've done, but never mind. If you can only get to there, that's absolutely fine. Just do what you can. Don't force it, because if you force it, you risk damaging the um, shoulder joint. Right, this one is good for your, your, your glutes, all your glutes, because you've got more than one glute. Um, and it's also great for the muscles down here. Sometimes if you notice people doing squats, their knees go in like that. Um, that's because these muscles aren't strong enough. So if you're doing a squat and you're doing a either sitting in the chair, try and hold your knees apart. Make sure your knees stay apart. Anyway, this one. Hold on to the chair because it's not a balancing one. Standing as upright as you can, trying not to lean to one side. You're just going to lift one leg up and you're going to point the toe forward. Try to make the leg do the work rather than getting it as high as you can by going that way. It's just the leg. So we're going to go one nearly fell over there, two, and feel it here. This is where it's pulling from. Three, your leg is acting like a weight. Four, hence the reason it's called the body weight exercise. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to do the other side. I love this exercise because not only does it work, all right, we'll start this, one, not only does it work the leg that's going up, but this leg is having to work as well. Two, this leg is having to support you. Three, so it's getting stronger as well. Ooh, four, Five, don't let, when your leg comes down, don't let gravity take it. Control it. Six, most exercises are slow and controlled. Seven, you see people in gym, gyms, particularly men, who are that with their weights, but eight, you get more benefit if you do it more slowly. It's more difficult if you do it more slowly as well, of course. Ten, fantastic. Right, next one is quite a simple one as well. Hands down by your sides, it's an arm one. I try and alternate upper and lower body. Arms down by your side, turn your hands out so if your palms are facing outwards and you're going to lift them up and just touch them above your head, turn your palms again and bring them down. So as you, you, you end up where you started off. So turn, we're going to do 10, that's one, two, more imagination. Imagine air is very heavy. Three. And you're having to push it out the way. Four. No, no, three. Four. Talking and counting is not my forte. Five. Oh, that's such heavy air. Turn. Six. And down. It's good this as well because seven you're moving your shoulders but you're moving your shoulders eight you're rotating them as well as moving them up and down nine and it's giving you full range of movement again ten if you can't get them above your head like that just do it as far as you can if you can only get them to there that's absolutely fine still do the rotation though but that's absolutely fine they're the purpose of these exercises is to build up. So if you can't do everything immediately, that's fine because it gives you something to aim to. If you can do them easily without, uh, as it is at the moment, then get some weight. It's not the right time to go and buy weights if you haven't got any weights. And actually with weights, you need to, you need to try, try before you buy. So it's a bit difficult now. But the rule of thumb is if you can do 15 repetitions easily, they're too light. And if you can't do eight, they're too heavy. It's just a very rough rule of thumb. Okay, right. Next one is a, it's a balancing one, but you have your chair there because I really don't want you keeling over. So what we're going to do, those of you that remember, 
I've been here before. We're going to engage core, which I should have mentioned at the beginning and we should have been doing all the time. So to engage your core, breathe out and then pull your navel into your backbone as hard as you can and then release it slightly. I shouldn't be able to see you going like this or like that. We're not trying on tight jeans. We're just getting core engaged. So breathe out, pull in, and then holding on to the chair if you need to, not holding on if you don't, alternating. Sometimes you may need to. You're just going to lift one leg up like that. And then when it's when it's as high as you can get it, well, I know, I know this sounds ridiculous, but when it's quite high, lift it a bit more and then put it down. What we're trying to do is pull the leg up with these muscles. So we're going to do it again and then up. I'm trying to do it without holding on because and up. Again, this is great for balance. It's great for these muscles here, your hip flexors to strengthen them up again. Whoops. See, I'm falling over. This is the fifth one. We'll just do five today. Up and down. Okay. It strengthens this leg because you're standing on it. It's great for balance. And it's great for the other leg muscles. Right, so engage core. <sighs> Pull navel into backbone. That's it. And breathe. Breathing is, is always recommended. And then up a bit further. And then down. I'm going to see if I can do it without. And up a bit. And down. These are something you can practice when you're in your kitchen. Waiting for the kettle to boil. Waiting for the pot to boil. Up and down, up. Woo, I'm gonna go <laughs> up and down. Fantastic, how did you do? I can see you all actually, I'm just pretending I can't see you. I've, I've got cameras in all your houses. Right, what we were doing before is we, we did this and did this, but I'm gonna change it slightly. What I want you to do is if you can, just touch behind your ear. I don't want your hands sort of linked or anything. You're just fingertip, tiny, tiny little touch be behind your ear. If you can, have your elbows right out to the side. Now, if this is difficult because of shoulder mobility, just do the best you can without hurting and without forcing. I'm going to put their feet hip width apart, of course. And we're just going to bring this in and touch your elbows. If you can't touch your elbows, doesn't matter. Two. If you can, fab. Three. This is such a simple exercise technically for, but I find it really effective on my back and the upper shoulders. Five, upper back, I mean. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. I really like that one. And you, when you're doing it, make sure you don't force your head forward. Everything stays just as it is, okay? And you're not having any support here with your hands. I, I like that one a lot. Right, we're going to get our heart rates going a little bit. So I want you to put your hands here, anchor your elbows in, and we're just going to try and get your hand to touch your knee. If it can't touch your knee, absolutely fine. It's something to aim for, remember? If something's difficult, you need to do it more. If it's quite easy, then switch over and do it sideways. But don't bring your hand to meet your knee. Because what, keep doing this as I'm doing it. What we want to do is just, you get a, a bend in your spine if you can do this. That's got a bit of a twist. That's quite nice. If you can, go up on your toes and do it. Okay. Or, same knee. It's actually... Slightly easier. It's quite a good balance one, this, actually. Right, we're going to keep doing this for another few seconds. My few seconds and your few seconds may not coincide. But anyway, we're going to do this. Just to get... And if you're on your toes, right, I'll let you stop now. Because I'm very nice. Next one is for this muscle on the back here. The one where your bingo wings are. I don't like that. I don't like that term. This is probably more effective with the weight, but you have to be careful about the weight. I'm turning sideways so as you can see again. 
I would suggest putting your hand on your shoulder if you can, because we don't want your shoulder to move. This is not a shoulder uh, exercise, only your forearm moves. So you have it up like that, and then it's right one, two, three. It's really useful to do these in a mirror for see if you're getting the right technique. Five, six, a lot of exercises, seven, eight, nine. 10. A lot of exercises rely, rely on technique. And it's really important to get them because you avoid injury and you, they're more effective. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. We're going to do another set of 10 squats. Arg, I hear you say, but it, they are so important. So if you need to do them in the chair, do them in the chair. If you only need to go down a short way, go down a short way. Okay, so feet hip width apart. Down we go. One, two, do that. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well done. A lot of these exercises you should be incorporating into everyday life. So if you drop something, you're walking along on your tiptoes, because you know it's good for you to walk on tiptoes, and you drop your hanky. In fact, I'll drop it here. Don't let somebody pick it up for you. Squat down and pick it up yourself. With your arm exercises, if you need to get something from a top cupboard, stretch first before you get a chair or ask somebody else to do it for you. Think about how you can use these exercises in everyday life. And that way you'll be constantly practicing them. Right. Next one, feet slightly wider than hip width apart, we're going to do some side bends. So we're going to go down, we're going to do five on each side. If you want, you can put your hand over your head. If you've got shoulder mobility, this will be difficult. And then up. This can make you dizzy, so be careful. Don't do them too fast. And try not to lean forward or back, you just go to the side. Two, three, Four, five. Don't know if you're watching all this, but I'm definitely getting better at these. Other side, down. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, last penultimate exercise. Get your thumb, grab it, so as your arms, your hands don't split apart. Have them down in front of you so that you've got a V. Now this one, hit, feet hit width apart, of course. This one, we're pulling up like that, but your, our, your hands should never be higher than your elbows. So if it's difficult, I've seen people straining and doing that. No, no, no. If you can only get it to there, that's absolutely fine because it's just by the constant movement that you will eventually be able to do it. And this is great for getting bins out of, bin liners out of bins and things. Right, so we're gonna go, we'll do 10. One, nice and slow. Two, you should have a V in front of you. If you can only get it to there, fine. I think that's three, might be four, but we'll call it three. Four, people that are used to my exercise classes, Five, we'll notice that my six, counting hasn't got any better. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I'm not sure how this next bit will go, but I want to try it. <clears throat> um, it's 
designed to put us after this don't go away because we're going to do some stretching but let me just do this first of all get your chair out of the way a bit make sure you've got a nice bit of space i'm going to come close here because i'm going to put some music on but first i'm just going to remind you do you remember to do this heel dig heel dig side side back back toe tap toe tap one more time heel dig Heel dig, side, side, back, back, toe, toe. Got that in your head? Right, talk amongst yourselves just for a moment because we're going to do it to music. And I think, I hope you'll enjoy it and put a smile on your face. If you're uncoordinated, again, nobody's going to see you. It doesn't matter at all. So I hope this works. I hope it's loud enough. Right. Uh, why does technology always let you down when you um, actually hang on no it's okay right should we try again oh if I switch the speaker on it works better right try again are we ready there we go Right, we ready? Hang on. When I wake up, well, I know I'm We're going to start that again. Sorry. Got it sorted now. Can you hear that? When I wake up, well, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be Side. in my new mix, I'm next to you. Back. When I go up, yeah, I Heel. know I'm going to be, I'm going to be Side. in my new mix, I'm next to you. Can you hear that? Back. I'm just going when to kiss you in it. Well, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be in my new mix, I'm next to you. And if I have a... Yeah, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who's able to do. But I will walk by hundred miles and I will walk by hundred more. Just to be the man who walks by thousand miles and falls down at the door. When I watch it, when I see 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 it, when I
and then swap feet. Just have a look down to make sure your feet are both pointing forward. Sometimes you can think that your feet are doing one thing and they seem to have a mind of their own. So just check that they are both facing forwards. And then gradually bend your back knee. Feel that stretch going down into your lower calf and your Achilles. The soleus is the lower calf, just in case you need that for the million dollar question. And then bring your chair. Well, no, you don't need to bring your chair because you've been doing it OK, but come to the side of your chair. <coughs> We're going to stretch the quadriceps. If you can, grab your foot halfway up your, your shin, your shoe, whatever you can, and stand up tall and try and get your knees together. If you can't do that, just do this, because this is the first one is a static stretch. This is a dynamic stretch. OK, so those of you that are doing this, keep doing this. Those of you that are holding your knee, your, your leg, your foot, swap, swap legs and go on to the other leg. But obviously, those that are doing this, keep doing this. We'll do that. Just because I stopped, you can't stop. I can see you. See, I knew, I knew you'd stop there. Right, you can stop now. I'm taking the chair back here so that you can see what I'm doing. We're going to do the um, the hamstrings, these big muscles on the back of your thigh. So sitting, sit forward in the chair, knees at 90 degrees, one foot out. You can hardly see me from the sofa. One foot out. It'd be nice to have a posh studio, wouldn't it? Except I wouldn't be able to go there, would I? Right. One foot out, toe pulled back like that. Remember, that's dorsiflexion. Sitting up nice and straight and lean forward from the hips. So your back stays straight. You just lean forward from the hips. However far down you go is up to you. It should never hurt. It should be challenging, but not painful. I'm quite bendy, so I can get down quite a long way. Other people can't. Some people can only get to their knee. You can't even get to that. Absolutely fine. Nobody can see you apart from me. So we'll hold it there for a few seconds. If you can, try and relax into the stretch. See if you can go a little bit further. And then sit up and do it with the other leg. So remember, toe pulled back, up nice and straight, lean forward from your hips. Keeping the toe pulled back puts more stretch on your hamstrings, as you've probably noticed, because your, your, your foot will want to point forwards. But that's for... That's for ballet lessons with Darcy Bustle, who's doing it on, online, I believe. OK, so standing up, hands out, palms facing forwards, feet hip width apart. And then we're going to look as if we're going round a tree. Have your arms round like that and then dip your head. And this is good for the, uh, you know, the big muscle at the top of your shoulders. Feel, try and get your shoulder blades apart. And then we're going to do the opposite. And interlink your hands if you can. If you can't, just have your elbows like that. Try and imagine you've got a can of something between your shoulder blades and you're trying to squidge it. If your hands are interlinked, just pull your arms up a bit and it stretches your chest. It's important, particularly as we get older, that we keep our back strong and our chest flexible, as it were. Because as we get older and the chest gets tighter, we can stop that now, it pulls you like that and you get the old lady stoop or the old man stoop. Right. Hand across your, your body. Put your hand on your elbow and push. How? That's for this deltoid muscle here. Now. This is one that people with damaged shoulders find quite difficult and painful. So if you're finding it painful, just don't do it. There's no point in forcing it. You're getting no benefit from it whatsoever. You'd be better just waiting until we get on to the next one. And in fact, if you've got a damaged shoulder, switch over. If you've got a damaged shoulder, you may not be able to do the next one either. But it doesn't matter. It couldn't matter less. Well, I suppose it could matter a wee bit less, but... Okay. Last one of our arms is 
Put your hand behind, just hold your hand up, put your hand behind your back like that. If you can only get it to there, absolutely fine. You still have, you'll still, you might get a stretch. But anyway, don't force anything and just push your arm back slightly. You feel, you should feel a stretch here. I mean, this no pain, no gain is just a lot of nonsense. No effort, no gain should be a better one, but it doesn't rhyme, does it? And then the next one, the other one. My daughter gave me a name today because I was thinking, because Joe Wicks is the old, is the body coach. I was thinking the old body coach, no, that doesn't sound very good. My daughter said, oh, you're the nan of the people. <laughs> Gives a lot of, uh, you could do nan for all, oh, I said this at the beginning, didn't I? Nan for all seasons. Running nan, oh, running nan. It's Arnie, wasn't it? Right, sorry, I'm, I'm blethering. You know, on the proclaimers, it said, if I haver, then I'll haver with you. Well, I was havering then. Right. So this is to try and get flexibility into our neck, because if you've got a stiff neck, it can be a falling hazard. Because if you're crossing the road and you turn to look like that, you're, off, you're uh, unbalancing yourself. It's easy, better just if you can turn your head. So first one we're going to do is... Put your, uh, just look down at your knees and put your hand on your crown. Do not push. Just keep it there. And just let it gently push your head down. Just the weight of your hand. Don't actively push. Okay, now, those of you that haven't done this before, don't do this, but watch me, because if you're doing it, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. Those of you that know what you're doing, you can go ahead and do it. So... Turn your head to the left as far as it will go. Notice where it is. Then put your hand on your chin and turn your head to the side. Just, sorry, try and turn your head back to the centre. But resist with your hand. Really resist. Create that tension in your neck and then relax. And you should be able to turn your head just a smidgen further to the left. Do that. Hold it there for a couple of seconds and then come back to the centre. And then go to the right hand side. Well, those of you, those of you that haven't done it, do it now. So turn to the left, hand on chin, try and turn your head back to the centre. Have that fight going on, tension in your neck. Relax, see if you can turn it a little bit. And then we'll go to the right. Same thing again. Have your hand on your chin. Try and turn your head back to the centre, but resist with your hand. Your hand is stronger than your neck. Create that tension. And then relax totally. And you should be able to turn your head a little bit more. Unless we're actually doing something, we tend not to turn our heads a lot. This is a good one for driving as well. It's handy if you can just look behind you like that when you're driving. Right. Thank you very much for joining me. That's the whoop, That's the end of the first or first of April's exercise class on my first class on YouTube. Um, I will look forward to feedback actually. Things that could have gone better are things that I probably want to hear about. OK, thank you very much for joining me and I will see you on Saturday. Bye.